absolutely love my Chromecast. It's always there for me, whether it's the morning, afternoon or evening, I can always rely on it for my entertainment needs. But there's one problem, I don't have anywhere to store and stream my physically ripped media to my TV, and I don't have all the money in the world to go spend on a server. So in today's video, I'm going to be building my own Plex streaming box with a twist. I'm going to be doing it for a budget of £20. If you want to see whether I'd managed to do it or not, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. Most of the beginner Plex server builds you see out there often start around the £200 mark, and there's a good reason for that. A combination of a good high quality CPU and GPU can often make transcoding video a lot easier and faster, being good for multi-user applications within households. But with our budget of £20, we're not going to have any top tier specs, but don't worry, we will be covering some workarounds at the end of the video on how we were able to transcode on such little performance. So jumping straight into this, it's time to introduce you all to the base of today's build. This is a HP Pro 6005, rocking an AMD Phenom 2 X4, 4GB of DDR3 memory, with all of this being in a rather nice small form factor unit, which actually cost me only 18 quid from eBay, a nice deal for what I got. What we're going to need is some storage and while I'm at it, throw in a graphics card, just to speed up some of the hardware accelerated streaming. But before we get into any of that, this machine definitely needs a clean, as it's apparent that whatever school or workplace that owned this machine previously didn't bother to maintain it very well, with lots of dust clogged up inside the machine and generally just being filthy from the tireless years of service that it had given. With a little de-dusting and some fresh thermal paste, we're ready to get into our upgrades. So, why don't we look at what I picked up for this machine? Well, starting off we're going to be using a 4 terabyte WD Red Pro. Yes, I am fully aware that these kind of capacity drives can go for a fair bit online, but I actually got this for free after it was donated by one of my generous viewers who found it in their company's e-waste. And as a side note, we're actually planning to do a video of digging through some of this e-waste to see what treasures we can find, so stay tuned for that in the future. To go along with that absolute killer deal, I'm reusing the £1.67 64GB SSD which I picked up in a video not too long ago, just to act as our boot drive. And then once again to go with our free parts, I'm going to be using the silent HD 5450 we reviewed a while back for our graphics which will do the job just fine for what we're looking for. It's time to start with step one of setting up our Plexbox for use, and that's going to be choosing the OS. While I am fully aware that the Linux enthusiasts are going to shout and swear at me for this, but I'm going with a copy of Windows 10 Pro, as that's what me and a lot of beginners are going to be more comfortable with. Not to mention, the HP machine comes with a Windows 7 Pro product key, meaning we can fully activate Windows and have access to features like remote desktop. Next, we're going to install and configure Plex. Using the Windows server setup is pretty easy, and once we have all our media directories ready on our hard drive, we can easily configure them in Plex to see all the media in said folders. Remember, if you want this to be an always-on server, you'll have to not only configure Plex to open on startup, but also configure Windows to auto log on and turn off power saving features, such as going to sleep. Another thing to configure if we want the ability to stream outside the network is to set the Plexbox up as a static internal IP and port forward. This will open the machine up so that you are able to access your content through your Plex account wherever you are in the world. Port forwarding should only be done if you know what you're doing, as the instructions vary wildly dependent on your router. I myself am using a Netgear Nighthawk X6. So now we get to the point of ingesting all our media. As our machine has a DVD drive built in, ripping our physical media gets a whole touch easier. 
Using a free copy of the software Make MKV, we can easily convert our discs into viewable MKV video files. But from this point, this is where we start to get into the adapting our files for the weak power of this machine. You see, we won't easily be able to transcode raw MKV files on this machine. So we're going to need to convert these into something a little easier for the machine to read and stream. MP4 files using the H.264 codec are the most universal file format and don't require any transcoding by the hardware. Therefore, that's what we're going to be using. Something like the free and open source Handbrake program will easily get through converting the files to their right format, albeit if we convert the files on the NAS itself, it may take a very long time. So it's recommended to do this on a separate desktop with a little more power behind it if you don't want to be wasting a full day converting one file. GPU video converters aren't recommended, as the quality generally won't be as high as using a slower preset. And there's no deadline on this, so do it as high a quality as you can stand. The newest NVENC encoder from NVIDIA is good, although it's not quite CPU quality. Another key thing about encoding is the bitrate of the media. Make MKV will rip the media at the quality it is on the disc, so if you rip a DVD it will, depending on the length of the media, be around 4.7 gigabytes maximum, Blu-ray up to 25 gigs, and with a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray up to 50 gigs. I'll put a chart on the video that is my personal recommendations for what bitrate to convert your videos to but it will be very much up to you what is more important that you must have more of, storage space or quality. So all the parts are installed and this machine is ready to go, but I just think it looks a bit bland. We need it to stand out. We need to make it the Plex box. I think it's time to bust out the spray paint once again and roll the montage. So, as we reach the conclusion of this video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for watching. This is a little experiment that I've been wanting to try for a while and honestly, I'm happy with the final result. We have a fully working, reliable Plex server for under £20 and not much of our time. If you guys have Plex servers of your own, feel free to comment the specs and details in the comments below, I'd be really interested to see what you guys are running. I do have plans to make more Plex and general server related videos in the future, so take this as part one of a series if you will. And with that, a final thank you and goodbye.